welcome to session 15 of our course on quality control and improvement using mini tabs. So, I am Professor Indrajit Mukherjee from Shailesh Jameta School of Management IIT Bombay. Uh, so, last time what we are doing is that we are discussing about uh, process capabilities and in case it is non normal what is to be done. So, some data sets we are just exploring and trying to see and I told also there are two types of transformation that is available one is uh, box Cox transformation which is a lambda transformation optimal lambda transformation that we are doing. So, if the CTQ is y represented as y, so y to the power lambda what should be the lambda values and that will transform the data into normality and then uh, we can analyze uh, process capability like that ok. And the uh, uh, specification will also be transferred like that. So, some examples we have taken and uh, we will try to extend that lecture to some extent and uh, try to see that uh, how uh, for the previous data uh, what we have taken how this transformation works in <coughs> capability analysis when there is subgroup size is involved into that ok. So, uh, so this is what we have done. So, I will I will go to the examples like that. So, I will go to the examples and so this was the uh, ring data that we are using samples. So, these are the subgroups that we are having. So, what we did is that we went to stat and then uh, quality tools and then we want to went to capability analysis and there is a capability analysis six pack also over here uh, which we can use uh, in case transformation is needed. So, I will go to normal over here and then in the subgroups I will mention that uh, these are the subgroup informations that we are having and uh, let us select this one and lower specification what last time also we have seen is 73.965 and the upper specification was 74.035. And uh, then uh, we went to transformation and we said that in case transformation is required use box cox transformation over here. And I click ok and then uh, in test what I do one point going outside that will be the uh, control uh, that we are using over here uh, stability uh, stability criteria. And then we write that if it is more than one subgroup. So, I use R bar concept R bar by D 2 concept to calculate the standard deviation. And based on that we will calculate capabilities uh, short term ok. So, in options uh, we have uh, uh, not mentioned any targets over here we can write 74 as the target like that ok. Capability and benchmark what is sigma labels that we have discussed last time. So, uh, in case uh, you want to check the sigma label you can do that. So, if I click ok over here what happens is that uh, this uh, analysis comes up and what you see over here is that. Uh, capability analysis over here and USL and LSL are transformed over here target is also transformed the values you can see are different because uh, the uh, min tab software is used a lambda transformation of 5 and after lambda transformation what happens is that you can see uh, the Sanderson darling test over here and p value is more than 0 0.05 that means it adds to the normality assumption over here and x bar charts are shown over here on transformed data and uh, range is also shown over here on the transformed data like that. And this is the overall capability analysis and CP calculation what you can see is 1.17 uh, and that it is saying CPK is uh, about 1.13. The CP value is not changing much. So, I think uh, transformation uh, after transformation also the data seems to be more or less and very close to normality. So, in this case uh, we may not have used transformation because it works well. Uh, I am telling you that uh, even if some small deviation moderate deviation uh, capability analysis is not much impacted like that ok. But if it is very skewed in that case we have to think like surface finish uh, what we have seen like that and surface finish are generally skewed dimensions like that ok. So, those things needs to be those CTQs need to be converted and then uh, according to target we can we can see the uh, process capability analysis. So, PP and PPK, PPK, CPK values are given over here and uh, those information you can get and ppm levels are also given. So, total ppm within and overall that is also given at the end ok. So, in the graph you will get all observations and also the uh, randomness of the observation last, last 25 subgroups. So, uh, these are the observations and it shows scattered towards uh, and uh, there is no such pattern what is revealed over here. So, in this case uh, we can we can consider that this analysis is quite perfect. But CP, CPK value indicates that we need to improve if we have to improve beyond 1.33. So, that is the uh, thing we need to we need to ensure ok. So, let us take another example over here. So, we will close this one and we will take the container example where uh, lower specification is given as 200. So, in this case I will use another transformation. So, quality tools uh, may be capability six pack I will go and normality uh, analysis we are doing. 
and container 1 to uh, container 5 over here and I select those observations and uh, then lower specification is 200 what was mentioned last time also this will be blank. Transformation let us go for Johnson's transformation now and click OK and then we test this one one point going outside and then estimation over here the same estimation process we will follow and in options uh, target value is 74 we can delete and otherwise capability analysis we want to see ok. One sided so CP, CP values will not come so in this case anyhow. So, uh, we have changed this data set we have given options for transformation as Johnson's transformation over here and we want to see what happens ok. So, when you click this uh, diagram over here what you see is that it, it has used a, is family of transformation. So, in this case what happens is that this is the transformation that is done on the y characteristics you can see x. So, x will be replaced let us say by y you can you can think about the data that is given is y information or CTQs generally be expressed like uh, effect that is the CTQ. So, final outcomes that that is the CTQ and that is y. So, a uh, mini dab says uh, that we have transformed with a symbol x like that the data set is x over here ok. So, then what you see is that after transformation of the data set 0 0.033. So, y is transformed to 0 0.033 plus this uh, with the function and then uh, x minus this and this is the family of transformation that is used uh, to calculate the parameters over here parameters are calculated and then the final outcomes what you see. So, data was transformed and uh, why it has done transformation because the data does not follow normal distribution. So, how do we ensure that one that we will see and after transformation what happens the p value over here what you see Anderson Darling test p value is more than 0 0.05 and I told that if it is more than 0 0.05 we have not explained uh, on that aspects we will do next time in, in our uh, subsequent lectures and we will uh, we will try to see what is the p value. But uh, at present we assume that if p is more than 0 0.05 in that case uh, it adheres to normality like that. So, the data set was plotted and p value was calculated as 0 .0, uh, 0 0.0.729 and that adheres to uh, our normality assumption. So, there is no problem with normality after transformation like that and the index was calculated over here ppk index was calculated as 0 0.61 like that ok. So, uh, this is already given over here. So, this is uh, uh, what I wanted to show over here and uh, and this is the transform data on which the analysis was done. So, I will click this one. Now, uh, this data set uh, is in subgroup. So, how to ensure that this is normality? So, what I did is that I, I, I took all the data set into one column C16 and then I want to uh, went to stat basic stat and I wanted to check normality assumption over here. I gave container data all and in this case I wanted to do Anderson Darling test and I click OK. And what I found is that uh, P value that I am getting is less than 0 0.05. So, less than 0 0.05 and that indicates that data is non-normal scenario exists over here. So, non-normality is there that is why box cox uh, or Johnson's transformation are used. But both the transformation will work everywhere it does not uh, it, you cannot ensure that one. Sometimes it works and sometimes both can fail also. So, uh, that is also possible like that. So, uh, in case everything fails then we have to see some other ways to calculate uh, non-normal uh, process capability. So, there are fitting distribution and based on that you will get options in need to do that ok. So, this is uh, uh, the data set that we are talking about over here and then go to the slides uh, what we wanted to cover next. So, this is about process capability. Now, in case of attribute data in case of attribute data where we have defects or defectives like that. So, in this case uh, how do we calculate the sigma labels or uh, process capability that that way is there any conversion that we can do ok. So, uh, so, for continuous data we have seen that earlier method works well and in case of process using count data that is defects over here some uh, other units are used over here defects per units defects per, per million opportunity and then based on that we can we can signify we can tell what is the sigma level like that. Although normal distribution assumption is taken uh, to convert this one. So, uh, but uh, basic assumption is that uh, uh, we can we can make a sigma level transformation from the defects per units defect per uh, opportunities and from there we can calculate the sigma we can we can go back to sigma level and uh, and based on that we can also calculate process capability like that. So, there is a interrelationship between all these metrics that we are using ok. Uh, but we are assuming over here process stability that is the basic assumptions that we are adhering and uh, customer let us say specification given as sigma level should be greater than 4 or something like that in this particular case. But last uh, last month what happened is I have 
I have manufactured 16,000 approximately units and uh, over a period of 18 days and I want to check what is the sigma level of the process and we found out that 231 defect defectives were reported like that or we can we can say defects or something like that. So, uh, you have to define. So, let us say it is defects over here 231 defects because uh, uh, six sigma methodology nowadays connects everything to defects not defectives. So, in this case let us assume this is defective. So, 231 defects uh, over here reported uh, out of 60, 16,000 units like that. So, do we meet the specification can we can we check the sigma levels of this ok and then accordingly we will take the actions like that. So, uh, then the definition is that uh, how do we do that we, we calculate defects per unit ok. So, 16,000 units and 231 was defects let us say. So, defects per unit will be 231 by 16810 that is around 0 0.0137 like that ok. Uh, you can go up to two place of decimal or three place of decimal like that defects per unit. So, uh, how many defects per unit like that ok. When we have done defects per unit then we can convert into uh, defects per unit per opportunity in one units like that. So, one important terminology that comes into uh, over here is opportunity opportunity ok. So, uh, this term opportunity is explained in uh, any six sigma uh, methodology codes like that. So, I will only tell uh, that uh, this opportunity has to be defined and let us assume the opportunity in one unit is one over here. So, in this case what we are saying is that uh, uh, the defects uh, per opportunity remains same. So, defects per unit is uh, uh, about same fraction and then divided by one also defects per opportunity also comes out to be same ok. So, uh, then defects per million opportunity. So, in one unit one one opportunity this much. So, uh, in million what will 10 to the power 6 multiplied by 10 to the power 6 simple uh, mathematics over here. So, uh, 10 to the power 6 uh, multiplication over here defects per million opportunity this comes around 13 point uh, 13 7 4 1 like that ok. And now, how to convert that into sigma labels what uh, we have in excel this conversion uh, formulas like that norms uh, norms inverse and 1 minus uh, 1 minus dpo that values that we have got and uh, plus 1.5 1.5 uh, that is added over here and that will give you the short term sigma levels like that. So, that will give you the short term sigma level this function is available in excel and you can you can do that in excel only ok. So, uh, we do not need, but there is a, a chart conversion what is also possible over here there is a complete chart where where you can found that. Uh, if DPMO is this much what is the sigma level like that. So, our case is approximately equals to 13741. So, let us try to see what is the sigma level uh, 13, uh, 13 how much it is 13741 over here. So, if you go over here in this in this graphically. So, what you can see is that uh, this is approximately uh, defects uh, around 13 no. So, this is 13 uh, and what was the value 741. 13, 7, 41, 13, 7 approximately over here. So, uh, in between somewhere over here 553 and 907. So, it is approximately near to 3 point uh, we can say 3.7. Uh, 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 so, 705 or something like that uh, we can assume like that. So, is it less than uh, 4? Yes, it is less than 4. So, we have not reached the sigma level which, which was earlier defined that customer specification is saying that sigma level for this uh, specific process should be at least equals to 4 and uh, here what we are seeing is that we have not reached that uh, sigma level over here ok. Uh, so, uh, so, this way also attribute data we can we can figure out and using this chart over here uh, and there are many uh, many of the books will give you this chart of the conversion of the sigma level short term sigma with DPMO. So, uh, if you see the last DPMO over here which is a six sigma process this is around 3.4 that after shifting the distribution this is 3.4 sigma level is 6 over here. So, in this case uh, it is a uh, six sigma process we can say. So, this is a uh, sigma level what we are getting 6 if defect is 3.4 here it is 13 7 something and in that case it is 3 point something and uh, and that is below 4. So, we have not reached that uh, sigma level yet what is required by the uh, customer like that ok. So, this is all about process capability what we have discussed and uh, uh, we will now uh, require some amount of statistics which will help us uh, to deal with experimentation. So, when we are dealing with experimentation some basic idea of statistics is required and I will give you some brief on statistics and some of the things that is really important for design of experiments and those things I will highlight not uh, I will highlight uh, huge statistics over here, but whatever is required at least we should cover over here.
ok. So, that I understand uh, basics of hypothesis although you can do some other courses where basic statistics are covered and I will I will give a brief introduction to that and uh, because that will uh, give some idea what we are doing basic next time ok uh, subsequent lectures over here. So, that way uh, we will try to uh, deliver something ok. So, uh, what is uh, statistics we want to understand because everywhere there is stat you see uh, quality over here. So, uh, uh, and everywhere uh, one of the values I, I have mentioned over here that means basic statistics x bar I have mentioned then sigma I have mentioned. So, this is coming what is the estimation of sigma all these things we have seen and uh, now we have blindly assumed that whatever is told uh, and uh, and we are assuming that that is that is the correct thing and we will do like that ok. But what is the basis of that? What is the foundation of that? So, we want to understand that one. So, uh, statistics can be divided into two uh, two categories over here and this is all about data science basically ok. So, over here what we are doing is that we we do not have ideas of uh, population. So, in that case we need to take samples because a machine is running for many years and uh, many many samples have gone out. So, yeah, countably uh, uh, although it is finite, but it is countably infinite basically. So, uh, we, we do not have all information all data sets over here. So, what we do is that we take samples out of that we take a screenshot and we say process capability is this much like that ok. So, how we are making that inference basically how we are making. So, uh, uh, what we do is that uh, we can we can see statistics in two ways one is known as descriptive statistics that means visualization of data what we have told then summary statistics what we have seen mean standard deviation all these locations uh, and that is uh, one area of statistics uh, which helps us to visualize which helps us to make some initial uh, initial interpretation about the data and the second part of that is known as inferential statistics. In inferential statistics what happens is that we will make uh, uh, conclusions based on the data the availability uh, data availability like that ok. So, decision making happens in inferential statistics and descriptive statistics shows visualization of the data over here ok. And for that using statistics it depends on what type of data I am having like, like what we are mentioning attribute data and the continuous data like that. So, category of data needs to be identified. So, we need to know what are the different types of data categories. So, uh, the highest level of data uh, category is uh, ratio scale data or interval data like that. So, these are the data which are uh, having the highest uh, level of quality high, highest quality level where we can do many analysis of statistics like that. So, uh, interval data means uh, a, a this is the data where we have uh, other than 0 uh, numbers can take any infinite numbers uh, in a scale like that. So, okay. so, ratio scale means it in includes 0 over here and then we have uh, ordinal scale where uh, like uh, rating systems when you go uh, do customer surveys like that. So, in that case uh, rate in a scale of 1 to 5, 1 to 7 like that that is ordinal scale and there is nominal scale like uh, color or where uh, we cannot arrange the data into uh, orders like that, uh, but we can say that uh, they are different like that. Uh, although ordering is not possible. So, uh, ordinal scale ordering is possible interval ratio possible, but uh, nominal scale like marriage marital status or male or female like that. So, we cannot say which is uh, bigger than which one like that which will come first which will come second. So, we cannot order that one like colors also we cannot do that ok. So, uh, most of the analysis what we do in uh, quality is assuming that CTQ is uh, continuous because we are assuming normal distribution and for that continuous data assumption is required or it is interval scale or ratio scale where we are applying this uh, concept of statistics basically ok. Because we have to make inference after doing experimentation. So, after experimentation we need to uh, let us say select uh, which variable is important which is not and which is to be changed like that. So, that uh, that uh, uh, analysis and to make an inference is only possible using statistics like that ok. So, statistics what we are doing basically is that we do not have uh, idea of the population. So, what we are doing is that we are taking samples out of the population like that and based on the sample information we are making some uh, we are extending our uh, idea about the population basically ok. So, we get an estimation from the samples and based on the estimation what we say is that population uh, uh, parameters will be this much like if I get a mean over here. So, if I if I get a mean over here I want to extend that one what is the population mean or where should be the population mean like that. So, I, I take only one sample I cannot do it several times like that. So, with one sample I want to uh, I want to predict what should be the mu values or the population over here. I do not have population information over here like in a tree if you are if you are uh, trying to predict what is the apple weights like that. 
and in that case what will happen is that you will take some apples and calculate the weights and then because this is destructive testing. So, I cannot take all all apples from the tree then uh, uh, we cannot uh, those uh, uh, is unnecessary over here. So, we will take some samples and based on that we will try to estimate about the population over here. So, we will make an estimation about the population. This is what we are doing in inferential statistics. We do not have information of population that is why we are taking samples that is why statistics is coming into picture and uh, uh, we take some samples and based on that we we try to uh, try to estimate uh, uh, population parameters like that whether it is standard deviation or whether it is mean because mean and standard deviation is the only thing about a ctq we, have, we want to infer about ok so uh, where is the mean so where is the standard deviation how much is the standard deviation like that of the population basically have i controlled when when i have taken i have done experimentation let us say simple experimentation one time can i infer it uh, in population so in population also behavior of the ctq will be like that so what we are doing is that we will do experiments with small samples and based on that we will try to infer that if i keep this setting over here a, it will work for the population entire population whatever inputs you are giving and uh, this is the process setting which we can adopt in uh, future like that ok. So, uh, that is why uh, we are using statistics we, we will not, not do experiment each and every time and then fix the parameters like that. We will freeze it one go and then maybe after certain time points if we feel that again experimentation is required we will do that ok. So, uh, what we are doing is that we are talking about uh, population estimation over here and uh, from sample information that we are getting over here. So, some sample information and this is the histogram what you see. Uh, so, this is the histogram what we are doing over here and uh, from this information I want to predict about the population. So, some sample information is collected from here and I want to predict the behavior of the populations like that. Population can have normal distribution as two parameters uh, one is mu and one is uh, sigma over here. So, these are the two parameters that define normal distribution a complicated probability function. Uh, which defines the uh, uh, probability density function of normal distribution, but what we are doing over here is that assuming that is known and in this case I take some sample assuming that is normal and then can I predict the uh, population parameters what should be the mu value what should be the sigma values like that uh, can we do that. So, uh, so that is what we are doing in statistics ok. So, uh, from sample information making inference. So, how many ways we can do sampling there are different ways of doing sampling. Uh, uh, when you pick the uh, apples from the tree how we can do that uh, and you have a huge target population like that and from there how to select that one there are probabilistic way there are non probabilistic uh, non probabilistic sampling also methods that means uh, which does not follow uh, basic uh, uh, randomness in that case like convenience sampling two I have shown over here convenience sampling and reference sampling like that convenience means based on my convenience I I pull any of the people and ask that what is the uh, what is what do you think about the restaurant uh, 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 food or something like that. I am standing just outside and whatever uh, customer is coming and I will do the survey that is convenience because convenience means uh, I will stand in one restaurants and try to infer about all restaurants like that. So, that is not recommended, but that is non probabilistic sampling ok uh, and there can be referral sampling that means uh, I am I am uh, trying to understand the philosophy of criminals in that case I will ask a criminal and he will give me some other reference of criminals like that. So, that will be uh, our uh, referral sampling that means, I go from one point and then the uh, then the uh, uh, the person I am surveying will give me hints who is the next next one I can survey like that. So, that is also non probabilistic type of sometimes uh, it gives you some lead, but uh, that is not probabilistic sampling. There are different methods of probabilistic sampling one is simple random sampling, stratified sampling, uh, systematic sampling, cluster sampling. So, simple random sampling what we do generally when we are doing experimentation and we call it as randomization, we call it as randomization. Systematic uh, 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 sampling when we are doing like in uh, control chart processes what we are doing is systematic sampling at a given time point we visit the process and that is assumed to be random. So, the, the first starting point and then uh, maybe after half an hour or something like that I am going to the process. So, there is systematic sampling and stratified sampling you understand that age group wise I am doing sampling like that mostly in survey we use this stratified, stratified concept and cluster sampling like uh, uh, polling and all these things exit polls or something like that there you can use cluster sampling like that. So, most uh, relevant to quality over here simple random sampling and systematic sampling that is the uh, only thing I can suggest over here which is which is of importance to us in this course uh, simple random sampling randomization is and how do we ensure randomization we ensure randomization by random number generation like that. So, samples will be selected based on random number. So, if you have uh, 
let us say 10 samples over here which one to be selected first maybe the first digit uh, second digit of this number we can take 7 the next one uh, 0 we will skip then 9 will be taken like that then 8 will be taken like this either I go row wise I, uh, or uh, I go column wise or row wise like that a any way you go it is basically random sampling that we are doing. So, we select the samples randomly and uh, we do experimentation why we do that uh, there is a proper reason for that ok why randomization is important like that in experimentation and simple random sampling is like that and systematic means uh, which samples I will select that is random. But, uh, uh, what time point I will go. So, at a, a defined interval we visit the process and take the data set like what we have done in control chart techniques like that ok. So, uh, that is systematic sampling ok. So, uh, these are the two types of sampling and what we are doing is that from the samples we are estimating some parameters x bar let us say average values over here. Uh, so, can I extend that uh, where is the mu values over here and for that the con concept of um, uh, confidence interval is used. So, uh, that we will discuss in the next session like that. So, here what we are doing is that we are taking some samples, we are estimating some means and we are trying to define that what is the uh, population uh, parameters like that, w what is the uh, population parameters like that ok. So, uh, up to this point we will uh, we will try to extend after this. Uh, this lecture after this one we will extend. So, what we have done is that uh, in this complete lectures that we have covered what we have said is that uh, process capability analysis uh, can be uh, can have non normal scenarios in that case what can be done is that we can we can transform that data set is in normality and then transform the USL LSL like that and then what we can do is that we can calculate the uh, capabilities uh, and that is the best way of doing and uh, but if there is a moderate uh, deviation in that case we can we can assume that normality assumptions are uh, we can we can uh, do that and without transformation also we can make inference. But plotting the data is always helpful and seeing that how much skewed it is ok. If it is not much skewed and we do not want to fit another distribution and uh, try to increase the complexity because uh, uh, shop load people will not understand so much complexities like that. So, uh, what we do is that in case it is required we will say process capability is this much and uh, in case transformation works uh, we will just show that the, with this transformation this is the current capability do not do it uh, assuming normality over here because uh, another distribution may be quite correct over here and this is the uh, non normal situation we can address that one using mini tab and there is an option in mini tab. So, we have options over here to fit distribution and then based on that we can do quality analysis. So, if I go to capability flag or capability analysis there will be non normal scenario, but you have to uh, assign some distribution over here. So, distribution has to be fitted and based on that specification you give and it will use some estimation over here for the parameters and then options will be given the target same capability benchmark like that. So, I need to fit distributions like that if I can fit the distribution uh, perfect distribution what what it follows like that and uh, and it, it is skewed distribution that we are fitting over here. There are different types of distribution and distributions can be fit and seen which is closest to that in Minitab also it is possible and based on that what we can do is that then we can do capability analysis like that. So, that was the starting point where and then uh, we, we went to the discussion that uh, uh, statistics. Then we talked about attribute data and how to how to calculate sigma labels like that in, in case it is defects in that case how, how it is done. Uh, so, many of the scenarios uh, can happen that this is the assembly operations and what is the sigma level of this. So, everywhere we want to implement the concept of sigma levels of the process like that. So, can I define that one? So, I have seen uh, you have seen the dp uh, defects per unit and based on that we can calculate what is the uh, sigma level of the process ok. So, then uh, we talked about that whatever we are inferring in quality and all these things is based on statistics and uh, we want to understand some amount of statistics over here. Uh, so, that will help us for making inference when we are doing experimentation basically when we are doing experimentation and um, for the basic idea of uh, hypothesis is required and one of the value that we have used p value we need to understand what is that p value. So, that a brief idea of statistics will help us uh, to introduce in some of the topics which are very relevant to quality uh, like regression uh, what what we will be used and in design of experiment. So, design of experiment is also. Uh, so, uh, how to make inference in design of experiment after doing experimentation how to make inference uh, and for that some background is required. So, that background I will highlight, but uh, you can always do some course on statistics and to understand more about statistics like that ok. So, thank you for listening this lecture we will stop over here and we will continue from here ok on statistics more about statistics. Thank you.